The surfaces of our bodies are teeming with a veritable jungle of microorganisms. These mixed cultures can be analyzed using isolation techniques that we have already learned in lab. A significant part of your interpretation for this media includes the statement of whether only normal flora is present or pathogens are present. For you to make these statements, you will need to know what normal flora to expect from each body site and their typical reaction on the following media. Through the use of enriched media, such as blood auger and chocolate auger, we can enrich for the growth of normal flora. Using selective media, such as sabrodextrose auger, and selective and differential media, such as mannitol salt auger, we can isolate and differentiate different species of microbes from the normal flora. Blood auger is named because it contains sheep's blood. Many bacteria that grow in or on the human body require complex sources of nutrients, such as blood, to grow well in the laboratory. Blood auger is also differential in that it allows you to see the type of hemolysis possible from microbes. Three types of hemolysis exist, alpha, beta, and gamma. Complete lysing of the red blood cells will result in a clear halo around the colony. This is called beta hemolysis. Here we see beta hemolytic streptococcus pyogenes. When lysis of red blood cells is incomplete, the media will darken or turn green around the colonies. This is referred to as alpha hemolysis. Here we see alpha hemolytic streptococcus. Here we see alpha hemolytic streptococcus pneumoniae. One of its virulence factors is a capsule, so you should note that the colonies have a mucoid appearance. When no lysis occurs, no halo appears around the colonies. This is referred to as gamma hemolysis. In terms of normal flora, the types of hemolysis that are commonly found differs depending on the body site. For skin, Beta hemolysis, mainly due to Staphylococcus aureus, and gamma hemolysis, mainly due to non-aureus Staphylococci, Micrococci, and others, is considered normal flora. Alpha hemolysis is uncommon on skin, but if present, could represent Streptococci and is most likely still normal flora. For nasopharynx, normal flora would give gamma and alpha hemolysis. Beta hemolysis can indicate carriage of Staphylococcus aureus in the nasopharynx. This would require further testing to assure that Staphylococcus aureus was not MRSA or methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. It should also be noted whether it's resistant to any other antibiotics. Carriage of antibiotic-resistant strains of Staphylococcus aureus should be eliminated through careful antibiotic treatment. For throat, alpha hemolysis is the most common type of hemolysis seen. Gamma hemolysis would also indicate normal flora. Beta hemolytic colonies can be indicative of a true pathogen, Streptococcus pyogenes, the cause of strep throat and other infections. Remember that beta hemolysis on a plate from skin was normal flora, so truly the body site sampled does affect the interpretation. The nasopharynx was sampled through the nostrils. Note again how the site would share some flora with the throat. The throat was sampled by swabbing the back of the oropharynx near the palatine tonsils. Here is an example of what blood auger plates swabbed from the throat might look like. Note the appearance of the alpha hemolytic colonies and one gamma hemolytic colony in the isolated colony streak. 
In this culture from the throat, beta hemolytic colonies most likely indicate Streptococcus pyogenes, a true pathogen. Notice that the beta hemolytic colonies are also mixed within alpha hemolytic colonies, which are normal flora. This is a normal throat culture on chocolate agar. Chocolate agar is obtained when blood agar base is heated to lyse the red blood cells. Since the red blood cells are already lysed, hemolysis cannot be determined on chocolate agar. Lysing of the red blood cells releases factor X and factor V, which are parts of the hemoglobin molecule. Microbes like Neisseria and Haemophilus, which are normal flora of the throat and nasopharynx, require factor X and V in chocolate agar to grow in the laboratory. These microbes also require high carbon dioxide content. The blood agar and chocolate agar plates inoculated from nasopharynx and throat must be grown under high carbon dioxide to facilitate the growth of Neisseria and Haemophilus and to encourage the growth of other capnophiles, especially streptococci, which are normal flora of these sites. Some labs use carbon dioxide incubators like the one shown here. Manitol salt agar is a differential and selective medium that selects staphylococci. Streptococci and other fastidious organisms like Haemophilus and Neisseria cannot grow on this medium. Remember from previous labs that MSA also allows differentiation of Staphylococcus aureus from other non-aureus Staphylococci by the coloring of the media. Finally, Saborodextrose agar is a selective medium. Its acidic pH selects for fungi such as molds and especially yeast like Candida. Yeast colonies will look like bacterial colonies with a circular margin, off-white coloring, and a moist consistency. The odor will also have a yeasty smell. Mold will appear as fuzzy colonies, if present. I hope that this photo story has been helpful in your understanding of normal flora and the test we use in the laboratory. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to ask.